child movement based therapies like PT and OT, but often over time they run into some tough spots and start to plateau. And many other families feel just straight up frustrated because they're not seeing results from PT and other therapies at all. Nearly every single time in those cases, we find out there is one crucial aspect of gross motor function that has not yet been found and taken care of. And so when parents do learn about that number one missing link, and how to get it improved and back online, progress and development take off like a rocket once again. This video is for parents who are concerned that their child may be experiencing some gross motor delays with tummy time, rolling over, sitting up, crawling and walking, or are already in PT and other traditional therapies and just aren't seeing the full and complete results that you've been looking for. In this video, we'll break down the key motor milestones kids should be going through and in what essential order or sequence they should be happening. And most importantly, you'll learn the most overlooked part of the body and the neuromuscular system that is not even evaluated by regular pediatricians or pediatric PTs, which is the neck and the neurospinal system. When you learn about how kids have the most amount of stress and tension actually stuck in those areas, you'll better understand why perhaps their core and extremities are experiencing low tone like you've been told. Now, moms and dads, I do have an ask. Please share this video with at least one other person because it could be the thing that changes the game for their child. Now, first, let's start out. We have to talk about a couple of different things to give you a framework so you understand exactly what's happening. It's important to know that the neurosystem controls the motor system, aka the nervous system controls the muscular system. And therefore, in order to fully address gross motor function, you must first address any abnormal stress and tension on the central nervous system in order to really get to the root cause. The central hub for the central nervous system is located within the brainstem here and the neural spinal system. The two areas which are unfortunately not commonly evaluated by a pediatrician or a PT, but is the focus and expertise of pediatric neurologically focused chiropractors like myself. You see the function of the brain stem, the neck, and the neural spinal system as a whole are even more important and essential to gross motor development than the core and the extremities are. You see, those vital areas, the brain stem, the neck, and the spine are commonly injured during the birth process by interventions such as forceps, vacuum extractors, induction, and C-section deliveries, which unfortunately are what oftentimes trigger the, the delays in motor development that we later see happen. Because this abnormal tone, tension, and coordination with the nervous system can create cascades of events that can stunt the brain's ability to perceive where it is in space, plan out motor development, and stop the milestones from occurring as they should. Because the way that the brain is really designed to work, moms and dads, is that we have to receive what is called proprioceptive input. And if you've never heard this term before, and hopefully you have by now if you have a child that's in PT or OT, but proprioception drives the growth and development of the brain, and it stimulates these motor centers to continue in a specific linear fashion. And so if we don't get proper proprioceptive input, then what will happen is you'll start noticing that milestones will be missed and core energy is going to be shifted into the wrong places. That's why we see problems with tone. Because the way that proprioception legitimately works is it has a couple of really important roles. Number one, proprioception helps our brain to know where we are in space. It's the reason why I can touch my finger to my nose and not have to see it. The proprioceptors that come from my fingers to my hands, to my elbow, to my shoulder, to my spine, they send messages to my brain so I can coordinate and plan the movement. Well, there's actually a great density of these in the spinal column. Like the greatest density in the entire body lives within the spinal column. And the brainstem area happens to be the area that is the most dense. So if we get normal proprioceptive input, then what ends up happening is, is that our brain is able to develop in the exact sequence with the right tone the way that it's supposed to. But if there is this thing that is called a subluxation, now it's a chiropractic term, so let me explain this for you. A subluxation literally means that at some point, something caused a vertebra or a joint to stop moving the way it's supposed to, and we lose normal proprioceptive input. But guess what? If you lose proprioception, it is replaced with this stuff called nociception, and it is altered input. It is a lack of proprioceptive input. And what it does, it disorganizes sensory input to the brain and activates the fight or flight system. So this altered input creates an altered sequence of events 
And subluxation can create this entire cascade of events that prevents the brain from going down the sequence the way that it should. And for the vast majority of cases, if this sub subluxation and abnormal tone is stuck in the nervous system and it's not addressed by a pediatric chiropractor and cleared the way that it's supposed to, it's likely going to be what results in these issues like abnormal tone, abnormal tension, and missed milestones happening in our children. And we see this time and time and time again. That's why many times when children come in and they are plateaued in PT or OT or even speech therapy, it's because there is this really significant loss of input that the brain is fully dependent upon. If you were to talk to your OT or your PT, they will tell you about the importance of proprioceptive input for normal brain development. That's why when we adjust a child, very gently, very specifically, but with the full understanding of its, its importance to brain function, it restores proprioceptive input and the brain is able to start shifting tone where it should and start catching up on motor milestones pretty quickly. And it's pretty cool, moms and dads. I've watched this hundreds upon hundreds of times with kids that we care for. And once you jumpstart the neurospinal system to, to get back on track with proprioceptive input, you will see many, 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 many children go right back through the sequence of events they've missed, redistribute tone, and start catching up on their motor, on their motor milestones. And lastly, moms and dads, if gross motor milestones are not fully completed in order and on time, it can then lead to other neurodevelopmental challenges, such as speech delays, apraxia, sensory processing issues, ADHD, and behavioral and emotional regulation challenges. Because when you're not getting the calming influence and the organizing influence of proprioception, and you're getting the stress-building influence of nociception, all of these things begin to wire the nervous system into a constant st state of stress, <clears throat> which will trigger the nervous system to go down this sequence of events of altered input, altered behavior, altered motor control, altered sensory control, altered behavioral and emotional control. In order to find out if your child has this altered neurological tone and coordination, what I would encourage you to do is to contact a pediatric chiropractor like us. Because what we can do is we can actually use technology. We can get in there and see what is happening within a child's nervous system so that we can know for certain if your child is dealing with these types of issues. Because moms and dads, I think it's super important that we have a way to analyze this. I'm going to share with you something over the screen here so you can see one of the things that we look at first and foremost. If we suspect that a child has altered tone, what we're going to look for is this thing that's called an EMG. An EMG is called a surface electromyograph. And if you look at this scan on the right, what it's doing is it's measuring proprioceptive input to the brain. Now, this proprioceptive input is measured in, in microvolts. And the amount of energy these muscles on the spine, these proprioceptive muscles are sending to the brain. And the more calm, balanced, and organized that it is, then the more likely it is that your child is going to be on track with their motor milestones. If you look at the scan to the left, what you see is areas of increased energy, imbalance, altered input. Altered input ultimately leads to altered output. That's why when we perform scans like, say, a thermal scan, a thermal scan is a measurement of output from the spinal cord. Now, this is a perfect example of what a thermal scan can look like. If you look at the scan on the left, these are what are called dysautonomia patterns, regions of the spinal cord that have abnormal blood flow because the spinal column is not sending correct input to the brain, and the resultant output is abnormal output, abnormal distribution, distribution of blood flow to the different areas of the spinal cord. These are things that for us that act like a roadmap, because when we're looking at these patterns of stress in the nervous system that come from altered input, we can then track the changes on things like a thermal scan so that they start to look more and more like the scans on the right, calmer and balanced as the nervous system begins to change and reorganize. And we see changes in tone like we see on this scan here on the right side. Another test that we use is a test called the heart rate variability. When you look at this, the center ring, the green area, is the normal ultimate pattern of stress of adaptability. When we talk about stress within the nervous system, if we have altered input, it creates a stress response within a child's brain, and, and it can alter the way a child's brain is going through its neural, neuro, neurodevelopmental track, which if you look here, the center ring of green on the right-hand side where the little white dot is, that is normal development. That is normal stress adaptability. If you look at the scan on the left side, you see the little white dot is hard left and low. It tells us that that child, when they were scanned, had very poor stress adaptability and a very high stress response. And this scan actually happens to be from a child that has significant behavioral challenges. 
So, so these are the kind of things that we see with kids when they come into our door, they give us evidence of what is happening. And we watch these skin, skins begin to improve over time as we progressively calm the nervous system and reorganize the nervous system through chiropractic care. This is why I think it's super important that we have a way to track and measure these things. Because moms and dads, if you're looking for answers, you got to have a way to get good data and you have to be able to track that things are changing. So I would ask that if you are concerned that this may be the case with your child, so I would ask that you do a couple of things. Number one, ask questions. If you are following us on social media and you're seeing this video, pop your questions down beneath. If you're following us on Instagram, if you're on Facebook, wherever this might be, YouTube, put your comments beneath and we'll get back to you. If you want to contact us directly through our website, go to EliteFamilyChiros.com and we'll be more than happy to get back to you through there. You can also email us directly at info at EliteFamilyChiros.com. Secondly, please share this video with somebody that would value would benefit from this. Whether it is another parent that you know, a family member, a Facebook group that you're a part of, make sure that you get them the information they need. And lastly, I, I would highly, highly encourage you to go to the blog on our website and do additional research. There are lots of great articles there that may be of tremendous value, value to you or to someone that you love. You can also go to pxdocs.com, which is a database, a great research site with case studies and further articles that will dive even deeper into this topic of gross motor delays. Moms and dads, I hope this, value, this video was valuable to you. Again, please share this and ask us any questions that you need so that we can help you to help your child. God bless you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.